So we got a ton of really, really interesting news that's coming out here. The Las Vegas Raiders obviously have a game coming up against the Cincinnati Bengals. And although the Raiders season might actually be over at this point, right, I, I find it hard to believe at 2-6 you're going to be able to bounce back and make the playoffs. Uh, never say never, but I do think there's still things to look forward to for this game against the Bengals. The Las Vegas Raiders actually have a change at the center position for this game. Now, uh, Andre James is not going to play for the Raiders, so it's not an official change long term. But we will get to see Jackson Powers Johnson on an extended amount against the Cincinnati Bengals. And the Bengals also don't have that good of a run defense, so this is a game where the Raiders could actually end up having a lot of success on the ground. And if the defense does a good job against Joe Burrow, they might actually be able to win this game. So the Raiders will have a tough game. Right? It's not going to be easy. The Bengals are a good football team. They're a playoff caliber team, potentially. They're looking to get on a roll where they can win a couple games and, and be over 500 and potentially make a push. But for the Raiders, you know, you're know you going to get Jackson Powers Johnson at the center position, essentially starting. And I think it's such a, a key thing that the Raiders have to be able to get right. You know, Jackson Powers Johnson has looked pretty good at, at guard, but he looked a lot better at center. It's only 14 snaps that we watched last week, but you saw so many good high quality plays by Paris Johnson. And I'm confident, regardless of if he plays center or guard, he's going to become one of the top five guys at his position. But I think at center, this guy has a real shot to become the best center in the NFL. I think by the end of this year, if he just plays center the rest of this year, I think there's a real chance this guy ends up becoming a top two or three guy by the end of this year. But we're going to have to first see him against the Bengals this week, which will be his first official start at center. And I'm excited to see what this guy can actually do. You know, one of the things I noticed when this guy took over at that position is the Raiders actually looked a lot better from a pocket perspective. And what that means is a guy like Gardner Minshew, you know, when Andre James is in there, he's getting pushed back and Minshew can't step up in the pocket. At the same time, if you can't step up, that means when defense ends are coming around, your tackles aren't going to just push these guys upfield because what ends up happening is as a, a, a quarterback, you can't step up, right? So it's almost like the pocket's collapsing around you, so you want to get the ball out quickly, right? Even if a route combination isn't actually, actually uh, if a route is not developed downfield, right? If you have a combination, a guy going deep, a guy coming underneath, and if it's not developed downfield, you might just check it off because you feel that pressure a little bit, and you can't step up. But with Powers Johnson, the thing I noticed last week was there was no pressure from the inside, at least from Powers Johnson. Now, Cody Whitehair had a couple losing snaps. Meredith was pretty solid, but he got pushed back a little bit at times as well. But with Powers Johnson, the guy was very, very solid. And we're going to get to see if he actually impacts the offensive line as much. I think he will. When I watch Andre James' tape, one of the things I notice is not only is he getting pushed back a lot on passing plays, but when teams run defensive line games, sometimes he's a little slow to see it. Right. And then sometimes if the slides to the right and there's a guy that's running a game to the left, he just he can't see it. He can't turn his head and process and see it. I only keep his focus to the right. But with a guy like Paris Johnson, this guy's brain works a little bit faster than other people. And this guy will quickly turn that head and, and, and he's a monster. He'll put people down. Right. So we're going to get to see that guy play this week for an extended amount of snaps. Right. So I'm excited for this. Plus, we get Dylan Parham back as well this week going up against the Bengals. Which means if Dylan Parham plays that right guard, Paris Johnson plays that center, Jordan Meredith that left guard, Miller, DJ Glaze, this is probably the best offensive line unit that we're going to see this year, right? This week right here against the Bengals, this is going to be the best offensive line we would have. In fact, I think this offensive line could actually be good. I think four of those five guys will probably be the starters going into next week. Meredith's the only guy you might end up replacing. Not saying Meredith's the bad football player, but I think Meredith has more potential and more upside as a swing offensive lineman, uh, he can play guard and center. He can play all three of those positions. And I think it makes more sense to keep him as a backup. And he's not a, a people mover, let's say, the way Jackson Powers Johnson is. And I think for the Raiders, you got to get five guys that can move people. Regardless of that, for at least this season, this next week, we're going to have the best offensive line unit coming into this week. And I'm excited to see what this guy can actually end up doing. Uh, just kind of speaking about Andre James, he's out. There's a couple of the guys that are uh, that are questionable. So. Dylan Parham's questionable, but he is expected to play. Uh, he has practiced this entire week. Robert Spillane's another guy that's questionable. Spillane on the other side is probably not going to play. He did not participate at all. Although it'll still be a game time decision, he hasn't participated this week. right? He has a legit knee injury, and he's probably not going to end up playing. Which means Divine Diablo will end up calling the plays out there. And then aside from Diablo, we'll see what other linebacker steps up. Is it Tommy Eichenberg? Is it Amari Gaynor? Right, it's another guy that looked really, really good early on in the process. 
will he step up and he'll play will he be able to play linebacker you know when Gaynor has played this year believe it or not he's playing he's been playing defensive end for the Raiders uh, and that was how bad it was early on in the season but from the time the Raiders had added Claybon Chase in the defensive line's actually gotten a lot better and it's crazy because we don't have Christian Wilkins right now we also don't have Malcolm Coons but the defensive line's actually pretty good right now for the Raiders um they're getting home they're generating pressure we saw it against the Chiefs where they're able to consistently get after the quarterback. I think the Raiders' defensive line is going to be a, a, a solid unit coming up this week, but we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, keep in mind, for us on the uh, on the West Coast, right, for those of you guys in Nevada or in California, uh, this week the game is at 10 a.m. We don't get a lot of these, right? Uh, but I enjoy 10 a.m. games personally, right? You get the Raiders loss out of the way, you know, enjoy the rest of your weekend, you know. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening, but I think the Raiders can actually beat the Bengals r realistically. Uh, the Bengals also have some injuries as well. So Orlando Brown Jr. and T Higgins, both starters are expected to not play for the Cincinnati Bengals. So I think that's a positive thing for the Raiders. Now, before we go forward, I want to just take a second to share my underdog picks with you guys. Uh, there's now trends in the NFL that exist, right? So we're at the point. Uh, we played seven, eight games up to this point. We know what team's good at what. We know what team's not very good. Uh, we're at the point where you can start to predict and have a lot more success with something like Underdog. Let's go through some of my picks for this week. So uh, we're going to start right at the top. We're going to take Jalen Hurts to have higher than 214 passing yards. Jalen Hurts is playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, who has the second worst pass defense in the NFL. They're giving up 271 passing yards per game on average which ranks second worst in the NFL. Only the Baltimore Ravens are worse against the pass than the, the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we're going to take the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts higher than 214 yards. Another team that's really bad against the pass right now is the Minnesota Vikings. And Joe Flacco is a guy that's now officially about to start his very first game uh, for the Colts. I guess this isn't his first game starting, but now he's the official quarterback for the Colts. This guy's going to come out there and he's going to sling the football. We know that to be factually true with a guy like Flacco. The two games that he did play in where Anthony Richardson was hurt, uh, statistically, he threw the ball 38, 44 times, right? That's a lot of pass attempts. Uh, against the Titans, he wasn't that good. But keep in mind, the Titans have the number one pass defense in the NFL. Against the Jaguars, he threw for almost 360 yards. And the Jaguars have the worst pass defense, right? So I should say the second worst pass defense. So you can see statistically kind of the difference. And uh, I expect Joe Flacco to throw the ball a lot once again against the Minnesota Vikings. And the Vikings also have a bad pass defense, right? Uh, 263 yards per average per game through the year. Third worst pass defense. We're going to take the higher on Flacco. Uh, and because of the fact that we think Flacco is going to throw the ball 40 times, I think there's a real chance that Pittman ends up scoring a touchdown higher on at least one touchdown for, for Michael Pittman, right? Or at least he'll have one touchdown. Uh, we'll take the higher on that. I think touchdown sometimes is based on luck. Right, a guy can get all the way down to like the three yard line and then not score, right? Which kind of sucks sometimes. But I think Pittman should be able to score a touchdown. Um, Chris Olave, we you know, Derek Carr is coming back for the uh for the New Orleans Saints, and the Saints are trying to make the playoffs. And if there's one thing Derek Carr is gonna come back and do, he's gonna throw the football, right? And the Panthers aren't that good against the pass either. I think they're like a bottom seven or eight team. So we're gonna take the higher for Chris Olave to have success against the Panthers. I think he'll have at least 66 yards, so we'll take the higher. And then Bo Nix, finally, higher 242 combined passing and rushing yards. Uh, Bo Nix has been a monster on the ground, if you guys don't know this. Uh, in the last three weeks, he's had games of 75 and 61 yards on the ground. And uh, through the year, he's been pretty solid as well. So I think 243 yards is doable, both between the pass and the run. Plus, keep in mind, it's in Baltimore. Baltimore is going to score a lot of points, right? They, they're they going to have success. They're going to score points. And uh, they're the worst pass defense right now in the NFL. And I don't think it's that their players are bad. I just think that they get up and teams start to throw the ball a little bit more. Um, it's going to be an interesting matchup, but I think Bo Nix will be able to hit those. So we're going to do $25 for this one. I usually don't do 25 Usually I'll do like 5 or 10 But I have confidence in this one, man. I think this one's going to definitely hit. Uh, this one's going to be for $810. Let's go ahead and lock this one in. If you guys think you guys can do better than me and you guys can do your own picks, uh, use my link down in the comments below to support the channel and then tag me on Twitter so we can talk about your guys' picks. Again, use that code in the comments down below. Let's just get right back into this video. Both starters are expected to not play 
for the Cincinnati Bengals. So I think that's a positive thing for the Raiders. You know, Orlando Brown is obviously a good tackle, right? He's had a lot of success. Uh, same with T. Higgins, really good wide receiver. It makes it easier for the Raiders on the defensive side. You know, the Bengals this year are, are essentially three and five. There's a reason why they're three and five, right? Their offense is not that good, right? It's, it's, it's kind of average. They've had some injuries. Uh, they have Jamar Chase, obviously, who's a really, really good uh, wide receiver. But that's kind of it, right? Like T. Higgins being out, there's not a lot of upside with those guys. Now, they do have a guy named Jermaine Burton, pretty good wide receiver. He's a rookie this year. I think long term, he has a ton of upside. But he's a rookie. I wouldn't expect him to do a lot this year. Uh, and then with Orlando Brown potentially out, you know, Cody Ford will likely step in at left tackle. And they also have a rookie in Amarius Mims who hasn't really been that good this season, right? So the Raiders should be able to get home against a rookie tackle and a backup tackle in Cody Ford. Um, their interior guys are, are are average players, in my opinion. Alex Kappa, I think, is probably their best offensive lineman, uh, right guard. I think he was the Buccaneers last year. Don't quote me on that. Uh, he's a pretty good guard. Uh, center, left guard. I mean, this offense line is not that good, right? So the Raiders should be able to take advantage of that. Um, the offense, generally speaking, isn't really that good. And I think just, just generally speaking, the Raiders should be able to uh, find success against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals run defense, bottom seven run defense. Uh, pass defense is kind of average. I will say this, you know, the Raiders offense also isn't that good. But the fact that we do have Paris Johnson out there, the fact that we do have uh, probably our best offensive line unit out there. We should be able to find success against this team. Uh, they do have B.J. Hill, Sam Hubbard, right? 94 Sam Hubbard's a really, really good defensive end. Trey Hendrickson, some people think he's a top seven guy. Uh, Bengals fans will tell you that that uh, Trey Hendrickson, their defensive end, is better than Max Crosby. I don't personally think that, but that's what they think of him, right? He's really, really, really good. Uh, and I do think he's a top seven guy. So it's not like he's you know either better than Max or garbage. He's still top seven. So the Raiders will have a real matchup for DJ Glaze this week. So uh, I'm excited to see what the Raiders do with him. Are they going to give Trey Hendrickson that TJ Watt? Uh, you know, are they going to give him that same treatment? Are they double team, triple team TJ Watt on every single play? Or are they going to let DJ Glaze go out there and have a true one-on-one -on -one battle against a guy like Hendrickson? Right, Let this guy actually go out there and, and have a true one-on-one -on -one opportunity. I think that's going to be an interesting thing to see this week. Another guy to kind of keep an eye on is going to be Logan Wilson, the inside linebacker for the Bengals. The guy's a, a, a difference maker at the linebacker position. I think he's a top five linebacker. He's another guy to kind of keep an eye on. Their defense is kind of average, right? It's not great. They have some playmakers, but it's not great. Uh, their offense banged up, not great, right? They're three and five for a reason this year, uh, as are the Raiders two and six. So we'll see what ends up happening. I think the Raiders will be able to beat this team. Uh, and I want to just touch on two more things. Uh, the Raiders did sign wide receiver Ramon Keaton to a two-year contract, and they officially activated the guys, this guy to the active roster. I love this, right? Because Ramon Keaton showed a ton of upside early on in camp. Uh, he had some good preseason games. He was making plays. And I think there's upside with Ramon Keaton. And the Raiders are actually promoting him. They're bringing him up to the actual roster. So he'll play a little bit more. Maybe he'll have some punt returns. Uh, we'll see what actually ends up happening, but he did get a two-year contract, so he will be with the Raiders for the next two years, right? Oftentimes, we see guys end up on the on the practice squad and then eventually just kind of released, and then we never hear from them again, right? But it's a good sign to see that Ramal Keaton is actually going to end up getting signed. And lastly, there was an article that Vic Tafer of The Athletic wrote, uh, specifically talking about why the Raiders are expected to stand pat at the NFL trade deadline. So some people do want the Raiders to ultimately sell a lot of some of their assets. Some people have talked about trading Colton Miller, which I don't agree with at all. Uh, some people have said we should look to trade Max Crosby, which I don't agree with at all. Uh, and then others have said, you know, there's guys on one-year contracts. Essentially, this is the final year. They might not come back to the Raiders. Guys like Malcolm Kuntz, Adam Butler, these guys have upside and potential. You might be able to get like a, you know, Kuntz is probably a little bit higher. Butler probably goes for like a six-round pick because of the fact that he is older and he's only on a one-year contract. But Kuntz has real value, right? Kuntz is a guy that although he's hurt, if you're able to move him, which I don't even know if you can at this point because I think he's on the injured reserve, but he might not be, so don't quote me on that. But uh, you want you might want to sell some of these guys. Trayvon Merrick, Nate Hobbs, these guys are on technical one-year contracts. If you're not going to bring them back, trade them and ultimately tank this season the right way, right? That's what people are saying, but I disagree with that a lot. And I agree with what Vic, Ta with, uh, what Vic Tafer is saying essentially in his article. 
the Raiders, it doesn't make sense to, to tank this season, right? Because let's be honest, if you're a, if you're a bad team, the, what we've kind of seen up to this point, and I don't even think the Raiders are a bad team, right? And some people will say, hey, I'm being biased, but, you know, the Raiders haven't lost because they're a bad football team. Our team is not a bad team, right? The Carolina Panthers are a bad team. The Raiders have playmakers. We got Hobbs and Jones and Max. We got Christian Wilkins and Malcolm Coons. I know those two guys aren't playing. We have Robert Spillane. And, you know, those guys are good football players, right? Believe it or not, even Adam Butler. Adam Butler will beat up in a one-on-one most guards in the NFL, right? And then on the offensive side of the football, Coy Miller's solid. DJ Glaze has shown upside. We don't know what he really is, but he's shown upside. You look at a guy like Powers Johnson. Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker. Trey Tucker's not an absolute difference maker, but he's he's a solid football player, right? You put Trey Tucker in a one-on-one against a guy like Derwin James, Trey Tucker's going to win. Uh, you got guys like Brock Bowers, right, who's a really, really, really good football player. The Raiders have pieces, right? And the thing is, is if you start selling these pieces, what well, you're sending the message to a coach that may come here next year to the Raiders is that we essentially tank. We're not going to be a good football team. Versus you can sell to a different team that, hey, the Raiders didn't have success on the offensive side, uh, Mr. Bobby Slowick or Mr. Ben Johnson. They didn't have success on offense, but look at this defense. Look at how good this defense was the first two weeks. Or look how good it could be when Kuntz is healthy and all these other guys are healthy. And all you got to do as a, a great offensive coordinator is just get a good quarterback. You know, we have a top 10 pick or whatever it is, or we trade up to the third overall pick. All you got to do is pick your quarterback and you have some weapons, but we'll maybe pay another wide receiver, whoever it is. Maybe we trade for a wide receiver, whatever it is. To me, you want to try to win and you want to keep your players, right? You look at the Carolina Panthers. They don't have good football players. You look at the New Orleans Saints, another team, right? The Saints are in a really, really bad spot with their cap space. Their best players are guys like in their final three years, right? Because they've ultimately carried the cap space so far in the future. The Raiders have a, a, they're in a great spot with their cap space. They have a lot of really good players that you can choose to bring back if you want. So you have, you know, Tom Tusco has all the, you know, he has all the decision making at this point with some of these players. Should we pay them? Should we not? The Raiders are in a really, really good spot, but you don't want to sell these guys and send that bad message, right? And you don't want to get rid of guys like Court Miller. Uh, to me, Court Miller, especially, because I think that's like the hot topic that's kind of training. Cole Miller, to me, trading him makes no sense. You know, you don't have to have Christian Derrissaw as your starting left tackle to say, you know, if you and, you and if you don't have that, then you don't have to say that, okay, now we need to trade the guy we do have to go try finding Christian Derrissaw. Finding Christian Derrissaw is a very hard thing to do. It's it's rare that you're going to be in, an, uh, in a position of opportunity where Christian Derrissaw actually comes available. Right, what the Raiders had in that draft where they could have actually drafted Christian Derrissaw instead of Alex Sutherwood, that doesn't come around that often, right? Most of the time, you don't get that opportunity to draft a top two or three tackle in the NFL. The thing is, is we're not going to have one of those opportunities, especially not in this upcoming draft. So if you trade Colt Miller, who plays left tackle this year or even next year? What if DJ Glaze busts out? Now you have two tackles that need to be replaced, right? I think sometimes people want to trade Colt Miller for a third round pick. It just doesn't make sense, right? Colt Miller's not going to, you know, he... he He's not going to get replaced as easily as people think. And again, you don't have to be a top two or three tackle. Colt Miller is still a top 15 tackle in the NFL. And that's good enough sometimes. You know, it's good enough to have those type of players. Miller's also not a top three or four paid uh, offensive tackle in the NFL. In fact, I don't even think he's a top 10 paid offensive tackle. So it's not like you're paying this guy a ton of money to, to be your starting left tackle. Right? So I think the Raiders should not sell. And I also wouldn't buy anyone, right? It doesn't make sense to trade for anyone unless, like, the Cowboys were moving off of Dak Prescott and the Raiders felt like Dak Prescott can put us over the top, which I don't think actually makes sense. But it doesn't make sense at this point for the Raiders to do anything at the trade deadline unless there was a team that was willing to say, hey, we'll give you a third-round pick. We're a playoff team. We need a guy like Adam Butler, right? In that case, that could potentially make sense. Uh, But I'm not trading Colt Miller. I'm not trading Max Crosby. Uh, even Jacoby Myers is a guy that I would potentially trade, but I'm not trading our entire roster for draft picks. It just doesn't make sense at this point. I want to know what you guys think, man. What do you guys think about this Bengals game? Would you trade? Would you sell if if you had that opportunity? Would you sell at this point? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.